Hi, welcome to the eighth part of the C++ guide for JavaScript developers. I'm Oscar, and today I would like to talk about bitwise operations and masks. Now, uh, bitwise operations are possible on JavaScript, but they are not very commonly used, and it's actually a very useful pattern in the C world, because C doesn't have enums, same as JavaScript, um, so it's very useful, or it's a very used pattern to express certain operations and permissions. So we will see it in a bit how they're used. For now, let's just go back into the definition of certain variables. So on this very basic program that I have, I have declared a variable. So we need to imagine how is this integer encoded into memory Right, and we can just say this is encoded like this. It's a simplification. Um, the actual memory representation uses the complement of two, yada, yada, yada. Not very important for our use case. We'll just assume that this is encoded as a string of zeros plus a one at the end. So we can actually modify the raw bits of this information. Right? We can operate on the bit level. So if we say I have now uh, another int and I'm going to take A and I'm going to use the double um, arrow operator and I'm going to say it shifts by one. What this is going to do is going to take all the bits of the original value and it's going to shift their position by one. So if I now do a C out of my B variable, I should see that the bytes have, of course, been shifted by one position to the left. So this is what's called a bitwise operation. And there is a bunch of these bitwise operations. I could shift to the right. I can also do operate on two values at the same time. So for example, let's say I have declared directly this as a two, and then I'm gonna declare a third variable as an or operation, right? So the or operation is going to compare each bit in the same position, and it's going to apply the or flag to them. So if either of them is a one, then the final value will be a one. In this case, if I output the result, then I get a three. Now, where this is used in the C world, this is very useful for expression, expressing certain um, values. So let's say, for example, I am developing a, a system management, a HR management system, and I need to um, give each one of the users that I stored on my platform a certain set of permissions, right? So for example, I will say this means that um, they can manage money or something like this, right? This means they can edit the calendar, for example. So if I have my permissions encoded as single bit flags, then getting a final representation of all the permission of my users is very, very simple. I only need to apply the OR operator. And then all of a sudden, this variable now takes a new meaning. These are my user permissions, right? I'm not too concerned about the uh, output or the final value, you know, this can take a random, a random value. What I am more interested in is that each bit will represent a different set of permissions for my user. So this is a pattern you will see a lot in C libraries. For example, in SQLite, you define how certain flags on when you open a database, you need to have certain configuration for it. So the configuration is already defined. All the possible flags are already defined for you. You only need to construct a final set of permissions 
by just applying the or the binary or bitwise operation on uh, the values or the permissions that you're looking for and this is what is called a mask right a mask just means um, that each individual bit adopts a meaning and it's usable in your program and uh, that's it for this video it was very short um, but just wanted to clarify it on the next video we will explore we will go back into pointers and see some other examples so hopefully the picture will be a little bit more clear whenever you have to pass pointers around and after we're done with that we will finally jump a little bit into the jsi topics i hope you enjoyed the video and please consider subscribing